Hey guys, Tom Owens here from MMA Fight Pass. Uh, we're here again. I got an exclusive interview with Javi Eye Candy Ayala. Eye Candy, right? Yeah, Eye Candy. <laughs> I love that nickname, man. First of all, where'd you get that nickname, man? Who gave it to you? Uh, it was actually a long time ago. I had a coach. Uh, make a long story short, we're sitting in the back and they and they're interviewing me, asking me, "Hey, you have a nickname?" And I was like, "No, I don't." He's like, "Yeah, you do. You're you're Eye Candy." I'm all, why? He's like, you always say you're the best looking guy at the gym. And I was all, no, no, that's not it. And then eventually it came out to where I was walking out. They announced me as eye candy and I stuck it. ever since then. <laughs> it's an awesome nickname, man. So we're here in your gym, uh, Extreme Grappling, right? Uh, I know you've been training hard, man. You've, you've been going for it. Uh, you've had a lot of high profile fights building up to this fight. Um, real real high profile talk about this fight coming up man that's what we're here to talk about uh vitaly menikov am i saying that right yeah okay he's uh i've looked him up and seen some of his fights he's a tough dude he's got a little mixture of punching and grappling um what do you what are you looking at with this fight uh you know what um like you said he's a he's a real tough guy he's a scrapper he's uh he's been uh he was undefeated until his last fight against czech so uh I know going in there, it's gonna, he's gonna come ready and prepared. So I'm excited. I'm excited to go in there and and utilize the things me and my coaches have been working on, and uh, to help get that win. We've we've watched you fight before, man, and you always go out there and put on a show. And man, it's so great to see a, another local guy doing it, man. And uh, your cousins with Joe Soto, right? Yeah, Joe's. Uh, he's my big little cousin. So did did Joe? Did he play a part in you getting into MMA? Uh, actually, yeah, I was, uh, whenever he fought for the Bellator, uh, belt, uh, I went and I watched it live and I was like, you know, this is awesome right here. I, I think I'm going to start trying, I'm going to try it out. So then, uh, I joined up a, a gym and then, uh, eventually I, I did it for like a, I want to say like a year and a half before I actually took my first fight and then fell in love with it. Now that first, I know you fought in Tachi and, uh, a lot of different organizations. What was the organization that you started with? Uh, the Warriors Cage right here at Eagle Mountain Casino. Oh, Eagle Mountain Casino. A lot of roots right there with all these young fighters. Uh, a lot of big names have came out of this gym. A lot of local guys. And uh, I'm sure you've ha had a lot of experience in here. How many fights did you have at that TWC? Uh, my first f three or four fights were there. And then you, you moved on to Tachi Palace from yeah, there? Yeah, I went to Tachi Palace. And then uh, after that, I, w I jumped around. I went to... I forgot. I think I went to uh, Pure Combat. I think I've done Dragon House before, and then uh, and then I got a call with Bellator, and then I've been with them ever since. Man, that's awesome getting to Bellator. Uh, that's a that's a big show, high stage right there. Um, how did how, how did you feel, man? When how did that work? Did they approach you for the Bellator fight? Yeah, they approached me, asking me if I wanted to uh, to sign with them, and and I think it was like a three fight deal, is whenever they were coming to Visalia. So uh, I went, I, I, was, I was excited and I was supposed to fight somebody else and then I think it ended up, they ended up switching up to where I ended up fighting Thiago Santos, which is one of their top guys at, yeah. that, at that time. And I ended up getting a, the, uh, a real good knockout and they ended up signing me for a, pro a promotional deal after that. Yeah, uh, we were there, we were there, man. It was, it was awesome to see the hometown guy. And uh, yeah, they threw in Sergey in there. He's a high level dude, man. No, uh, no, no it's Thiago yeah, Alves, yeah. right? Santos. Santos. Diego Santos. Didn't he fight in UFC or Pride or one of those? Uh, no. Um, there's another. There's another Thiago Santos too, oh, but okay. this is a, he's a different guy. But he he had been with Bellator for a while, and and uh, I think he took second in the Bellator heavyweight tournament when they had it back then. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, man. He's uh, he he was something else. And man, when you got in there and uh, it was at the convention center, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the crowd went wild, man. When you walked out there. Yeah. Uh, how, did, how did it feel to have that backup out there? It felt good. Uh, you know, it being so close to home, a, lo a lot of people from, from Porterville, I know a lot of people from Visalia, they showed up and they showed some support and it felt great. That's cool, man. And then you're, so you're in Bellator and I'm sure after that win, you were probably getting approached for different fights. Uh, who was next in your, in your next fight in Bellator? Um, sure, it was a long time ago. Um, I think I had fought Eric Prindle next. Yeah, they they had uh, approached me to fight Eric Prindle, which he was the the heavyweight tournament champion at that point. And then uh, I had fought him, and I ended up winning in third round. I think referee stoppage. They stopped because his eye was all s swollen up. 
Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> you got that type of uh, brawler style, but you've also got the ground game as well. Um, it's pretty pretty good mixed up style. Um, I was going through your fights earlier, you know, just checking them out. You got some pretty high profile fights, man. Uh, yeah. you, you got some fights with, just to name a few, Czech Congo. Uh, you fought Roy Nelson. And then recently you fought Frank Muir. What, man, what was it like when you they, they call you with a big name like that? You know, it, it feels good, especially because uh, I idolize these guys growing up, and, and even watch when I first started MMA, I was I would watch them and be like, man, these guys are these guys are amazing. I wish one day I could be as good as them, and now they're my competition, and I get to fight against them. And that's really something else, man. Uh, you fought Sergey. Now he's a was that your first like real high level fight? Yeah, that was actually like the first high high level guy that they approached me about fighting and and uh, i knew who he was and I, I accepted right away and uh i would don't get me wrong i was super nervous but i went oh, out yeah. there and i did my th i did my thing you sure did man you went out there and did your thing um a lot of local guys wouldn't have took that fight you know what i mean that's that kind of fight isn't for everybody and uh we always talk about the wins and everything but what i like to talk about a lot and get the mentality a, lo a lot of people don't want to talk about their losses but I feel like the losses are some of the best learning experiences. Yes, yeah, they are. Um, how was it, man, when you, like, they call you for Roy Nelson, for in, for example. What what did it feel like, man? It felt great. Um, like, uh, I watched Roy Nelson all through the, the UFC and stuff like that. And for them to tell me, hey, do you want to fight him? I was like, yeah. Like, I didn't even hesitate. I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'll fight him. There's no hesitation in these fights. That's, yeah. that's crazy, man. And when, when you start getting these high-level fights, uh, was your training, like, did you change your training? Did you bump it up, or did you just keep doing the the same thing you'd always done? Uh, we did. We kept we kept doing the same thing we always did. We started adding a few things, and then uh, of course we we started going a lot harder. Just just knowing that these guys are who they are, I had, it, it gave me that motivation to push harder and uh, to train harder. Now, when you came out of uh, was it you fought Roy before Czech, right? Yes. So, fighting Roy and uh, the fight didn't go your way. What did you do after that fight? Like, how did you feel, and and what? How long was it before you came back in the gym and just start pumping it up again? You know, I was uh, I was super pumped up after the Roy fight. Like, um, I think a lot of people expected me to go in there and get knocked out by one of his overhand rights, and then me feeling like I did so well. I think, besides the 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 takedowns, so uh, I came. I almost recently. I almost just kind of came exact right back in. And then uh, I started working on uh, my takedown defense, my getting up from the from my back, which uh, it showed later on in the fight, especially against when, when I fought Frank Muir and he had me on my back and I was able to get up. Yeah, man, your most recent fight was Frank Muir, right? Yes. And uh, man, I can't imagine what it was like going into a fight against Frank Muir. He's he's been one of my idols and a guy that I looked up to as well. And man, just looking at his record and what he's done in his career, uh, man. That was really something else. He went in. Uh, Frank went into the fight. He got a lot of his positions that he likes to do, and you just hung in there. And uh, how, how did you feel during that fight? Was it how how crazy was that with him? It, it felt great um, with him being on top of me. I uh, we worked a lot of those positions here at the gym, and uh, so I, it didn't really bother me. Um, there's uh, we have a lot of big guys here. Like I, I was telling my coach, I was like, oh, he's just going for for big guy shit. I'm off to catch me in something. You got to catch me in something super sneaky. Yeah. So uh, all the big guys that are here at the gym, they 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 do uh, Kimura stuff, key locks like that. So like I seen it coming. Yeah, you guys, you got a lot of high profile guys, a lot of really good grapplers in here. Paul Estrada, Joe Soto, that's just to name a couple of them. Yeah. Um, Paul Estrada is one of the, you know, unknown people around here, but he's got one of the best grappling games and I that I feel around the area. Yeah, he does. And then having Joe, you know, being at a high level like yourself, that's really something else. Um, besides training here at Extreme Grappling, is is there any other schools that you like to go with and put some time into? Uh, usually, I, two times a week, I'll go to One Kicks in Visalia, and I'll do I'll work my Muay Thai there. And uh, they really got he's really gotten uh, my elbows and my knees and my kicks up to where my hands feel like they were. So my hands always felt great. But uh, he was able to get my knees, my kicks, and my elbows. Get him in line? Yeah. Uh, who's the coach over there? Uh, his name's uh, Crew Ferran. Oh, okay. Yeah, Crew, I went to school with him. Uh, he's always been deep into the martial arts. Yeah. So you, f you feel like the Muay Thai has helped quite a bit? Yeah, I feel like it's, it's between working with uh, him and working with Jim and Sinus, uh, with my 
Jim's mainly been my boxing, and then the crew's been uh, my Muay Thai. So mixing them together, I feel like it's been uh, it's been a great advantage for me. Yeah, I'll bet, man. And uh, now was it after the Frank Muir fight that you signed a four fight contract, right? Yeah, I got a. Uh, they offered me a new four fight deal, um, and I accepted. So uh, Bellator will be my home for for another four fights. That's really something else, man. That's that's pretty cool. Four fight contract with Bellator. Um, have you ever thought about getting into the UFC later on? Uh, you know what? Bellator treats me really good. Yeah. And uh, I'm really happy with them right now. So if they want to keep me. I, I'm gonna end up. I'll stay with them. Yeah, I like the Bell Bellator production. There's they've always do it good. Um, besides these fight, man, like a lot of people want to know kind of about your history i know you uh growing up you did some wrestling and like track and field in school yeah how much like how early was it that you started doing wrestling uh, i was in eighth grade when i started wrestling and i know this area right here has pretty good wrestling um from the wrestling did you do track and field first or the wrestling first uh i started off wrestling first i started I, well actually i started off playing football first and then once i got into middle school i started wrestling and then uh I got into high school and I started playing football. I started doing football and wrestling, and and then I then I picked up track and field. Nice. Now uh, a lot of fighters that I know, you know, especially from the valley, they had uh, before they ever fought in the cage or anything like that, they had some street altercations or you know what I mean, fighting in high school, their older brothers or whatever. Did you ever? Were, were you one of the guys that maybe got some scraps when you were younger? No, actually, I was actually. Um, if you talk to whoever knows me, that they can tell you I'm a super calm person. I don't really. I don't really get into too many fights even in high school i didn't really get into fights at all and i think i think it had to do something with me being big i was like i think i was like 250 if as a freshman oh, wow. so i don't think no one wanted to mess with me yeah <laughs> i believe <laughs> i believe it man and uh that's crazy dude <laughs> did you go to do any college or anything uh, i i did a uh, portable college for a little bit and then uh, i ended up started working and i ended up leaving uh not not completing my uh to get a degree at the college nice and uh as far as like family life goes you're are you married yeah i'm, I'm married i got two kids and, and, a, and then a dog <laughs> how about two kids oh, and a yeah uh the dog's a, the important part man <laughs> um yeah, when i fought i know my family they were excited but they were also nervous at the same time it was some of them were telling me to do it some were telling me not to do it how does your family feel about this crazy adventure uh you know what my 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 family's super supportive. There's uh, there's uh, some that don't like me doing it, and there's and there's others that that they like it. Like my wife, my wife can't can't watch me fight. Yeah. She can't watch me fight and, and until she knows the outcome. Like she can't watch it live, and then we don't let my kids watch. No. Yeah, I just I, ever ever since I had fought in Fresno and yeah. my nose got destroyed, yeah. and then they were taking me to the ER, and then my son seen me, and he was like, and. He kind of got in like shock, and ever since then, I was like, you know, what? I'm not gonna let him see me fight. Do they ever, at this age, um, have they ever like, you know, seen you fight and then express like maybe, you know, later on, I want to do that too? Uh, not yet. Um, so I'm I'm waiting to see how how it goes later on when they get a little bit older and and they want to try to do it. And I don't mind them. I, I would like them to to train that way they they can defend themselves. But uh, fighting, it's it's hard on your body. It's something I wouldn't want for my kids. I would want them to be like a doctor or a lawyer or something. Yeah, I agree, man. That's crazy. So you were you born and raised right here in Porterville? Yeah, I was born and raised here. And you're from the Valley and everything. Uh, that's, pr that's pretty trippy, man. So what, what was it like growing up in, here in Porterville? Did you know a lot of these guys that, that you train with in the gym right now? Uh, not uh, Going to high school, I, I knew a lot of these guys when we were in high school. And then my cousin... Joe, well, we grew up real close together. We would always play like football on the streets. Uh, we'd actually throw on the boxing gloves a few times. There was a few times me and him would, would box their old, his older brothers. Yeah. They were like 18, 19, and we were like 12. Yeah, those are, that's the stuff I'm talking about right there. A lot of those early, you know, the uncle watching, they throw on the boxing gloves. Yeah. Those, <laughs> those type of deals, man. Right on, man. So going into this next fight, uh, I'm sure you've done your homework. You've probably seen the gentleman fight quite a bit. Does anything change for you or just going in there and doing your normal thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go in there. Of course, we're going to change a few things. Uh, he, he comes out uh, strong. He hits hard and stuff like that. So we, we took that into play. But also, I'm going to go out there and just do what I normally do, be, be myself, 
and uh, try to get this win. Now, this is a four fight, fight contract, and uh, you're fighting this fight with Vitali. Um, is this fight, I know Ryan Bader has the heavyweight title, right? Yes. In Bell, Bellator. So, is it, are they kind of setting this up where the winner of this fight will fight Ryan? Uh, right now, I know Ryan's going to defend his belt against Czech in September 7th. And then, uh, well, me and Vitaly are fighting, and I know Matt Mitrione and Sergey have been on on a good run. So I don't know. If, I don't know what's gonna happen after this. I'm I'm hoping it it leads up to where if I get a good win here, uh, it puts puts me a little bit closer to that title shot. Now, are those uh, is Czech fighting on that same card? No, Czech's fighting uh, September seventh in San Jose. Now your fight. Uh Give us the date and where it's going to take place. Uh, it's going to be August twenty fourth in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Connecticut. Now, are you used to are you used to traveling around to these places? Uh, yeah, I've gotten used to it. I've I've been to Connecticut before. It's a beautiful state, um, nice and green. Uh, I've been to what Texas, Oklahoma, New York, and Hawaii recently. Oh. So. How was Hawaii? It was nice. It was beautiful. Um, the, wherever you got to, like the resort part, it was super beautiful. And you fought in Hawaii? Yeah, that's where actually I fought Frank. Fra I fought Frank Mir in oh, Hawaii. Okay. Man, so back to that Frank Mir fight. Uh, he ended up tapping to a TKO. Uh, what was that all about? Uh, later on, I had found out that he had broke his uh, his upper jaw. I, I think they said there was a few of his teeth that were folded back. And uh, Bellator actually just recently put up a highlight video of that fight and uh, you see a big old elbow that I threw land and it landed like right here and I was uh, you know I think that's probably the one that, that did it right there and that was like you guys were in like a pumble situation up against the fence is yeah. that when you landed it yeah yeah and I seen him he just tapped out no moss that, that was it with that so Frank Muir he was the, hit, the champion in UFC wasn't he yeah at one point he was yeah he's he's really something else hey so when when he tapped out right there what was going through your mind uh you you can look back and watch the video um, I was kind of in shock. I was like, "What the heck is this guy? He's tapping out!" And and uh, I felt him kind of like tapping my like my head and my shoulder. And I was like, ah, "He can't be tapping out." Yeah. And so I kept hitting him, and then all of a sudden he started tapping a little bit harder. I was like, he's, "I looked at the ref. I'm like, he's tapping." And then, <laughs> sure enough, he did. That's crazy, man. That's like he's one of the main guys I used to watch. You know what I mean? For a big guy, uh, for a heavyweight. A lot of heavyweights don't have that kind of a grappling game or yeah. that, that kind of skill. So that was really something else. Um, being from the Valley, man, like we get we, – we go around and we interview all kinds of people. But, man, I always get excited when I see you Valley guys doing it. Central Valley has really became a hot spot for not only jiu-jitsu and grappling, but for MMA we've had quite a few big guys coming out of there. Um, when, you, when people come up to you and they ask you where you're from and where you got your roots – like, how good does it feel to, to say that you're from the Central Valley in these small little towns? Yeah, you know, it feels good. Um, there's a lot of, there's, we have a lot of talent here, like you said. Um, even a lot of people that aren't known yet, um, just that are really coming up, there, there's a lot of tough guys here. Yeah, it's really something else. Um, I know, man, there's so many names, I can't name them all, that have came out of this small little gym. I mean, this isn't the biggest gym, but... We came and watched you guys train recently, and there's you guys are going at it pretty hard, yeah, uh, harder than most gyms go at it. Uh, the training's not light. I mean, you guys are seriously doing it. Is that is that the way the training is all the time here? Yeah, training here is all, like that all the time, uh, especially whenever a guy's got a fight. Um, you get rotated on like grappling nights. I go, I roll for about an hour straight, and then guys rotating on me. No break in between, so we're just going. Just constantly going. That's why you got that good cardio for heavyweight. A lot of heavyweights don't have that kind of cardio. Um, I know you've worked with all kinds of people and different coaches, but right now in these last couple fights, uh, you want to talk about your coaches and give a little thanks to the guys that have been working with you? Yeah, you know what? I'd like to, to thank Paul Estrada and uh, Joe Soto for helping me get my ground to where it's at now. And then uh, my boxing coach, Jim Encinas, to help me keep my hands sharp. And then my Muay Thai coach, Crew, uh, from One Kicks, with the, he's been working my kicks and my elbows. And then uh, I really like to send a big old thanks to, to my wife. Uh, without her support, I wouldn't be able to, to keep doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah, a lot of wives don't, don't go for this kind of stuff, man. Yeah. They don't. It's, 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 it's true. And uh, a lot of times training and, and uh, doing all this stuff and fighting, it can, it's, you got to balance it out, man, yeah. with, with the family and this. And I've seen 
a lot of guys ruin their relationships with this kind of stuff. So yeah, it kind of it kind of consumes you like the sport. Like you just want to you just want to train and train and train, but you gotta remember like you gotta you gotta spend time with your wife and kids. You gotta make time for them. Yeah, it's like yin and yang. You gotta you gotta do both of them. Um, I know you got a lot of support. You got all these people backing you up. Uh, you obviously got some good sponsors. Let's uh, name your sponsors if you would like. Yeah, um, I have a people that have been with me for a while. Uh, Alonzo Morales from About Millions. Uh, my uh, Mike Allen from uh, Homes for Rent. Uh, I have my massage therapist. Her name is Laura. She's been she's been helping me take out all the kinks from my body from all the, all the damage done by training. Um, who else? GFY Gear, um, Dethrone. Who else? There's quite a. Let me see. I got my banner right there. Uh, uh, direct capital. Direct capital lending. You know, if you guys yeah. ever want to sell your house or get a home loan, you guys go to them. Fifth quarter. Yeah, uh, the fifth quarter. quarter. Uh, they haven't. They haven't recently. So, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much everybody. We're gonna have to get the owner of Fifth Quarter. Yeah, get a little sparring match with him. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, man. Well, I really thank you for the interview. We're, we're super stoked to come in here. Um, with the MMA Fight Pass, we're just trying to give all the locals, you know what I mean, give them some props. And we really thank you, bro. Um, it's been an honor talking to you. And thanks, Coach, for, for letting us come in here. Thank you for your time. I know you're a busy guy, man. You're getting ready for this fight. And uh, this might be a little reliever, just chilling and talking yeah. about it a little bit. I know me, I'm, I, I get nervous with all these things. But, hey, we're all rooting for you, man. You got the whole Central Valley behind you. And, man, we're going to be tuned in watching that fight. And we're excited for you, whatever the outcome is. I'm, I'm just happy you're in there doing your thing, man. And uh, I hope you keep doing your thing. Keep working with these young fighters. Uh, you're, all, you're obviously an inspiration to these younger guys. You know what I mean? And uh, it's really something, bro. So thank you again. You have anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you guys for having me on the show. You're very welcome, brother. Thank you again. And we'll see you soon after the fight. All right. See you All right. That good?